Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to be doing a Viseyard review. Viseyard came out with four quads for the spring and I bought three of them to review for you guys today. I'm going to of course be showing you swatches of these. I'm going to show you the packaging up close and I will be doing one look with each in case you are interested in getting any of these for yourself. The quad that I ended up skipping on was the peach one, which I'm going to show you a picture of right over here. And the reason I skipped on this one is because I feel like I have a lot of colors very similar to it in my collection. It wasn't as appealing to me as the rest of them right here. These have more unique color combinations, I thought, and so these are the ones that I'll be reviewing for you. Plus, I do own the Viseyard Spritz Edit palette, which has a peachy color story. I thought they would probably be very close to one another. That one having four shades, this one having 12. I just thought that I already had all of the peach from Viseyard that I needed, and I just went ahead and skipped on the quad. Anyways, if you're excited for today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you leave, and let's get started. I do have some other of the Viseyard Petite 4 quads, I believe, that they actually sent me. I was going to say I bought, but I think they sent me their um, holiday collection around November, and I did a review on those, and I really love them. These little quads come in this super tiny, extremely travel-friendly packaging. They each retail for $25 and they are customizable, which is great. So you can pop these shades out of here and interchange them and in turn customize them. Let me begin by showing you the Petite Force Bastille, which is this really nice, beautiful blue color story. I really like that they have little designs on the outside of their packaging now. As you can see, the inside of this one is pretty neutral with a pop of blue, and I definitely wanted to play with it. Plus, I really like that these four shades are pretty versatile. You can create at least a handful of looks with just these four colors, so I definitely had to pick this one up and here are the swatches of the blue palette I'm not going to lie when I was swatching it on my wrist I really expected the blue to be more pigmented right away it is what I would call a pretty buildable blue shade but it's not as pigmented as I expected it to be right away the rest of the shades did perform kind of the way that I thought they would the next one I got was the Petite for in the color pistachio. I'm just gonna say the name in English because I don't know how to pronounce it in French. All four of the palettes from the spring collection have the super cute macaroons graphics on the outside and then on the inside of this one there's two shimmers, two mattes. There is a matte brown, a shimmery champagne cool tone type of a shade and then two shades of pistachio, um, one shimmer one matte that I cannot wait to get into. And then here are the shades of the Pistachio palette. As you can see, they are absolutely glorious swatches. I certainly cannot wait to play with this one. And then one palette that I was definitely super thrilled to play with was this stunning purple palette. This one is called the Petites for Lavender. And when you open it, it has three matte shades and a shimmer. All really beautiful shades. I feel like we're going to be able to create a really pretty purple pastel look with this palette. And here you can see the swatches. I feel like the two top matte shades I wanted them to be a little bit more pigmented, but just like with the blue palette, I feel like they seem to be buildable. So we'll see how they perform once we put them on the eyes. I certainly cannot wait to play. So let's get started. I'm first going to do like a green look and a blue look, and then I'll take those off and I'll do a purple look towards the end of the video. That way I can play with all three palettes and tell you what I think about the formula and the shades that were chosen for the palettes and whatnot. Okay, I got the hair out of my face. Let's get a little bit closer and do these eye looks. As you can see, I already have makeup on um, because I was running some errands this morning. So I will be applying my eyeshadow around um, already applied mascara. <laughs> I'm going to start with the pastel palette on this eye. And this right here is my refer number 15 brush. Um, these are pretty powdery shades. So I feel like maybe doing your eyeshadow before you apply the rest of your makeup 
might be a better idea, but you know, here we are. I'm just going to do it this way. And I'm using this shade up here, which as you can see is basically the color of my skin. So I'm going to use it as a base shade all over because it is not giving me any color, but it is acting as a really nice neutralizer all over the eye, a really nice base. So all the way from lid to crease, I'm applying it. So with my same number 15 brush, I'm going to go into the brown here and build that color on the outer V of the eye and blend it forward. I don't know what I'm going to do to incorporate that blue, but I'll figure it out. This brown can actually be blended into a really nice transition color, as you can see. It's not too intense, but you can also build it up to be a little bit more intense. So very versatile shades. By the way, these palettes have a longer than usual shelf life. They have a 36 month shelf life um, and they are made in the USA. Okay, with a refer number one, I'm going into the blue and I'm going to apply it to my eyelid on the outer corner. Definitely has fallout, so be careful. <laughs> I was looking for a tissue, but all I have is a paper towel. So I'm going to put a paper towel right here because I want to try and avoid the fallout from getting underneath my eyes too much. And I'm going to add more blue. And as you can see, this blue is pretty soft. I honestly expected it to be a bit more pigmented, but with the blending brush, this is pretty much all it's giving. I want to wet it and see if it like transforms into something like much different. This is my refer number 28. Oh yeah, there we go. So you can definitely get it to look intense. That actually looks really pretty. But you have to wet it. And it doesn't look matte anymore. It looks kind of shiny when you wet it. I don't know why I wanted to try that, but here we are. It just was not giving much, was it? <laughs> so with my dry brush that I was using to add it to my crease earlier, I'm going to just blend the edges of what I just did. I feel like that kind of works, so I'm just blending those edges. And then with another number 28 brush, I'm going to grab this shiny shade right here and use the bronzy shade on the rest of my eyelid. Mix it into the blue back here. Okay, so I am honestly not loving this. I feel like the blue is not pigmented enough and some of the shades are like a little bit extra dusty. To me at least, the exciting thing about this palette is the possibilities of what to do with that blue and I do not like the formula of the blue shade at all. And I'm sorry because I love Viseart, but that blue formula is at least not for me. I don't know how to make it work. I feel like even when trying to put the shiny shade over it, it started looking a little muddy. It might definitely be me. It may be user error, but I just don't know how to make it look better. Just to finish up the eye look, because I don't want to leave it, you know, halfway done. I'm going to use the blue underneath the eyes and I'm blending it out with the matte brown shade. So this right here is my eye look with the blue palette. If you're used to watching my review videos or my tutorial videos, you know that this is just not usually the type of eye look I do. I think on a regular basis, I do eye looks that are, you know, a lot more glamorous than this one. Um, which makes me not love this palette and I can already tell you that this particular one I do not recommend But let's move on to the green one because it might just be that this one is a flop and the rest of them are great We'll see so to begin my pistachio look I'm going to start with the matte pistachio shade on a refer number 15 brush And I'm going to put that on the inner half of my eyelid here and I'm just going to back and forth blend that with my refer number 15 brush. And then with that same brush, I'm going into the brown and I'm going to do the half of my crease with the brown, mix it with the green and then just back and forth. Oh, that is pretty. I like the way that's looking. A little bit more brown to intensify things. 
And I like that it didn't become muddy. It's just kind of like a smooth transition between the green and the brown. Okay, I'm tapping a little bit more brown to see if it gets any more intense, but I feel like this is it, which is okay. So far, I really like that already. I'm going into the lighter shimmer shade here with a rougher number 26 brush, and I'm going to put it on the inner corner and blend it in ever so slightly. Rougher number 26, just blending it in around a third of the way into my eyelid, I would say. And then with the tip of my finger and the pistachio shimmer shade, I'm going to do the rest of my eyelid by tapping it in place. Back with the matte pistachio shade and a rougher number 14. And I'm going to do half of the under eye right here, back and forth. Same brush and the brown shade. And let's finish up the under eye by doing the back half of it making it meet back here with the top. And then I just use this Odin's Eye Gel Liner in 006, which comes out on the 20th, in the waterline of my eye. So this right here is the final look with the Pistachio Quad. I definitely love this look a lot better than this disaster over here. So this quad is not in the naughty list. If you're thinking about buying them, I definitely love all of the shades that came in the quad. Um, and you can make things a little bit more deeper and um, sultrier looking by adding like a darker brown back here would be really nice. This is just as dark as that brown matte goes. But if you deepen it up with something else, I feel like that could be really pretty. But I do really like this eye look and I feel like the quad performed better. I definitely don't have complaints about any particular shade or anything like that. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the third quad, the lavender quad. I'm back and I don't have color corrector or concealer underneath my eyes right now because I, you know, was swiping around the two eye looks I just created. And I left it without so that if I have fallout right now, I can just wipe it off a little bit more easy. So once the top of the eye look is done, then I'll put my concealer back on. Anyways, I'm both pretty excited and also scared of <laughs> this one because I want to love it as I love the color story. But the two top shades were a little bit sheer when swatching so i don't know how that's going to affect the eye look but i definitely really want to love this one because the color story is amazing so let's try it i'm going to start with the lightest matte shade right here and my refer number 15 and i'm going to put it on the inner part of my crease i'm doing this so i can use as many shades as possible because now i'll use a different shade for the last half of the crease. A little bit more, see how it builds up. Oh, okay, see, I like this. Okay, good, I'm not as scared anymore because I was really thinking that, you know, we were going to have a blue situation. I just really didn't like that blue shade, but it seems like everything else is not like that. So this is great. I'm going to grab the second shade right here with the same brush. This one's a little bit darker and we are going to do the outer half of my eye with it, tapping it with that refer number 15 and then blending. And you can definitely see the difference between the two shades. One looks a little darker, the other one looks a little lighter. I'm going to get the dark purple eye down here with my refer number one brush. And I'm going to put it on the outer corner of my eye, just patting it in place first. And then I'm going to start blending it into the color on my crease. Pat, pat, pat it and blend it. Last but not least, let's go into the shimmer shade, which is a really beautiful cool tone shimmer. And put it on the rest of the eyelid from the inner corner and all the way in so that it meets with the purple back here. Back with the number one brush, which was the one I applied the darker purple with. I'm just going to back and forth blend it into the shimmer. A little bit more shimmer. I'm applying it with my finger. I feel like this might be better. Okay, and this right here is the top of the eye with that lavender palette. I do have some thoughts I want to share at the end, but I'm not mad at this. Let me make myself even and put concealer underneath my eyes and then I'll be back. 
back with both eyes done and concealer underneath my eyes let's finish it up with my refer number three I'm going into the dark matte purple and I'm going to run it underneath the outer third of my under eye I'm switching to my refer number 13 and I'm going to grab the lightest of the mattes and I'm going to diffuse everything with it and go all the way to my tear duct area did I just switch eyes? I did. Okay. I applied an eyeliner in my waterline. This one is from NYX. It's the NYX Epic Wear Liner Stick in the shade Graphic Purple. Let me add some more mascara. Okay, so this is it right here. This is my final look with the purple palette, which I am so, so glad that did not disappoint. So let me go ahead and give you my final thoughts on the whole collection, which palettes I like better than others, and my overall recommendations. I feel like I was pretty clear about my thoughts on the pastel palette earlier. It is just not for me. I didn't find a way to make the blue perform better and this one I do not recommend because I don't know I just didn't like the look I created with it and the one shade that I was excited about didn't perform nearly as I expected it so unfortunately I don't like this one and I feel like there is much better blue toned palettes out there that you can get it's a really pretty compact and convenient packaging but I just would not go for that one these right here on the other hand i did really like i think my favorite one oh i was thinking the green but i really like this purple one too i like the green because i felt like the color story was a little bit more different i definitely do think that i have purples in my collection with which I can get a very similar look to this one so I'm going to stick with what I was going to say and I do think that my favorite one is the pistachio shade I feel like this pistachio quad is definitely really beautiful for the spring and summer season like I said when I had it on you can definitely deepen up the outer corner of your eye a little bit by just going into one darker brown type of a shade but I did really love this color story how the look came out and I feel like this particular matte green color right here is what does it for me I really really loved it and then a very very close second is the lavender quad if I'm being overly picky and obviously nobody asked my opinion on how to design this palette but I'm just going to give it to you anyways I feel like these two mattes in this quad were not needed I feel like one of the two would have been okay I would probably have left this one in and exchange the lightest shade for something else and the main reason is that I feel like this color can be blended down into something that looks extremely similar to this one so I feel like both of them are not needed and whenever I'm judging like quads or like palettes that have limited space in them I tend to like more or think better off the ones that have the most variety in there so that with a very small little tiny palette you can get several different looks with this particular lavender quad you're not going to get a ton of variety however I do really like it I found that all of the shades performed well they were pigmented extremely blendable Viseart has really really blendable shadows and I overall did really like it but I do think that just because there is a teeny tiny bit more variety the pistachio one was my favorite plus I really loved this tone of green right here so those are my final thoughts in the collection if you're looking for a very small compact palette with these type of color stories I do think that these two are worth it I would absolutely not recommend this one because I did not enjoy it at all and then the peachy palette I thought was cute too but I feel like I already have so many of those colors that I didn't even want to pick it up for today's video Anyways, I love you guys so, so much. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought of all of the quads. And also tell me which one is the one that you would most likely pick up. Even if you're not interested in buying it, just tell me which one your favorite was. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet and you like videos like this one, please don't leave without subscribing. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up before you leave. These little quads are currently exclusive to Beautylish, so I'm going to leave you my Beautylish link down below. And I'll let you know once they become 
come available in other websites. Um, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for hanging out with me in today's video, and I hope to see you back in the next one. <laughs> Bye.